Welcome back Valued Viewers, it's Sunday daytime and as there is literally no rest for the wicked uh, we're going to crack on with the Nissan. So today, it's going to be an interesting one, I've done this before, uh, we're going to do the rear end uh, restoration underneath, that means from there, more a little bit further, maybe about there to there. Now on this car that's where the gas tank is, so the first thing is let's drain out the uh, gas tank into a doodar over there if we can and then remove the gas tank uh, then inspection and uh, we'll take it from there okay everything is out lots of petrol there as you can see we just about caught it in time which is good because obviously uh, you can't buy these anymore and I really don't want to make one so it's all good Got some interesting stuff in there we need to fish out. God knows, 26 years of something. I can see two rubber seals in there. I can see a clothes label for something. So, you know, lots of shit's gone in there that we've got to get out. The straps, these are structural. Um, they hold the fuel tank in. And there, uh, you see, just on their way out. So that's all got to be redone. Brackets that are associated with all this. Are just rotting away completely. Completely need redoing. So we'll get that done, um, and obviously before we do any of this, I suppose we better go and look at the actual car and the mess that's left underneath. Stand by. Pew. On the whole, pretty good. Well, all right. If you need a bit of work, all that's got to come off. 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 It's the same the other side. I haven't got a light over there at the moment, but that's going to come off. This area is okay. Rear side. Need to do a bit of work. So let's get the angle grinder off. Let's take the rust off, take the old paint off. Uh, and we'll pull back. It's been much harder going than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Uh, it's a lot more rust than I thought there was going to be, but I'm just cleaned up. What I can. Everything's hard to get to when it's on your back. A real pain in the butt. All down here was it's all main well it's mainly surface rust. There's no welding to do, which is nice. But it just needs to do it. Down here, this needs more work for the long term, but for the short term it should do. Can I get it up and around there, that's as far as I wanted to take it today um, that's it so it's only half I've done the other half I'll have to do next week, take the exhaust off and do next week um, so let's go and put some rust treater on it and try and treat that rust as best we can ok, starboard side of the rear, we've got the truss uh, the rust treatment on there as you can see it's ok, I haven't done the perfect job but I think it's as good as I'm going to get and then on my back, <sighs> treated everywhere that I can get to anyway. And so on, around there, and whatnot. So, now done, let's get uh, proper paint on the starboard side. Hey, okay, painting's finished on the rear starboard. Two coats of uh, Andy uh, Rust Converter. And then three coats of hammer oil. Doesn't look pretty pretty. But it's solid and rust free. Which is nice. And done the best we can. It's quite hard to get into all the nooks and crannies with the power tools, so done the best we can. Like the rest of the car with what we can do. Uh, you know, working on your back. So that's that lot. Next, we're gonna remove the exhaust and work on the port rear side and get that up to scratch welcome back, just remove the exhaust to get a bit more um, of a view in the situation now look where that panel is there with the torch, the same that panel there oh, just when I've refreshed a little bit there they're kind of blocking in this kind of box section and what I've just found is that that box section is rusting from the inside it's full of dirt, sand, I can't get it out and it keeps building up so we're actually I'm having a change of plan at this point. I'm thinking of cutting that entire panel out all the way along there to relieve that box section so it can self-dry and, you know, water, because it's full of moisture as well. 
they self dry it, they self clean. I've always, I can't stop the thing from rusting off. So you've got these two flank bits that come down either side. Uh, I don't I think it's really structural, or structural in a minor way. So I don't think I've got to worry about the structure. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut them off. Hope I don't regret it. I usually do, but we'll see. Uh, watch the space. Okay, that panel's cut out now, down there. And you can see I was right, just rusting through from the inside, moisture's got in. All kinds of crap down there that I never could have got out. There as well. So, uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to tackle this, but I'm going to clean it all up as best I can. And save as much metal as we can, I suppose. Stand by. Okay, that escalated pretty quickly. I took that panel off there. But what I found was I still, still couldn't really maintain what was in there. So I took a few more strips off. And what we've got looks a little bit more sensible and maintainable now. Ugh. So that's what we've got now. Most of the rot's been cut off. And I can actually kind of get to it now. So I can, what was there, I should be able to stop it going much further. So what we're going to do now is clean it up, paint it, treat that. And that will be the new corner of the car. Oh, okay, welcome back. Oh, so I've just uh, cleared out the, uh, uh, what was that, the port stern corn, corner. All this metal's come off. Bucket loads of metal. Oh, let's get a look. This was really hard. Almost gave up. Oh, God. It was all friggin' rusty as hell. Where's the torch gone? I think because the exhaust goes under here, muffler or whatever you want to call it. So everything had to come down. I haven't managed to get rid of all the rust, but I've done the best I can with the tools I've got. So again, all day, absolutely knackered. It's all cleared, it's good. Three square foot or so. I've also completely got chopped the section off, you can see, to match that side, or as best I can match that side. Because I couldn't prevent it from rusting inside and it was all, going, it was all gone brown. So I chopped it off about, so it used to be about that level. Now it's that level. Uh, so all that's been done. Uh, that's it now, I need to get some undercoat slash rust converter on there. And we'll take it from there. Question for you guys, I wonder why you think it rusted so badly this side. Obviously it was the exhaust and heat. But why does heat expedite corrosion? I was unaware such a thing existed. Be interesting to know if anyone has an idea for that. See like that, I haven't managed to get everything off, but you know, hours and hours and hours this takes. Upside down, it's a horrendous job. So I'm just going to do the best I can. Right, start painting. Okay, several coats of rust color undercoat applied. Looks a bit funny, doesn't it? <sighs> Absolutely exhausted. Hopefully it's worth it. Hopefully it just doesn't, hopefully the uh, exhaust won't melt the paint and let it go again, but we'll see how it goes. Right, let that dry, uh, give it a couple of days, and then we'll uh, put the top coat on. Stand by. Okay, so two primer coats later and two or three top coats later, we have a vastly improved rear end. It doesn't look pretty, but it doesn't need to look pretty. It's all solid, as solid as I can get it. As we saw, these are completely modified, so they're cut out now, but I reckon that's going to work a lot better now. Actually need some more modification at some point for some, something else, but I'll deal with that later. So that's the starboard side, and we go to the port side, which was the real son of a bitch. switch from gloss black to gunmetal grey at this point where I accidentally order the wrong thing on eBay but it doesn't matter
Okay. This is modified as well and cut out as you can see. Cut up about six inches. Should it really be should self drain now. Should be superior. Should and that's that. So next, so that's finally done. We're going to move on to uh, the actual fuel tank over there and accessories. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Uh, so we've finished the, the rear of the car there underneath. Now on the fuel tank, it's going to be a bit of a bigger job than I thought, but it's pretty much been the whole like that the whole way through. I really want to do this outside today, but it's just been miserable and raining because it's England at the end of the day. Uh, so have look at this tank. Uh, I mean, it's just got rotten. It's got really weird paint on it, nasty, crappy paint, and this always seems to be the same with fuel tanks. They're either terrible paint or just not painted at all. It's just like bare steel. I've never understood it. I mean, this I haven't touched, and you can see the shininess of the steel there. It's just bare steel. Um, I just never understood it. It's the same with modern Nissan's I used to deal with. So I've started scratching the surface there just to have a look. Uh, on the plus side, fingers crossed this will surface rust, and um, we should be able to retrieve it. At one point I was worried I was going to have to get a new tank, which is basically going to be impossible. You know, 26 year old car at the end of the day. Uh, it's an import only as well. Uh, so, masked it up. Now, the annoying thing is, uh, because this is a terrible designer vehicle, the way this tank sits is it gets put in position and is squished against the top of the car, which is just stupid, as you'll probably agree, with these little pads, and then just kind of. Um, it's got straps, straps that just kind of pull it up all the time into the car. Uh, but these things have gone terrible and rusty, so my idea is I'm going to take a picture of the, of the locations, because that will be critical. Uh, then I'm going to remove these pads, and then I'm going to um, uh, replace them with my own rubber, probably, which is a little bit thicker, but I think it should be okay. I don't see a problem there. Uh, if the, the tank is down another 5 mil, why would that be a problem? Um, and um, make sure I get them in the right place basically because they have to be in the right place and that's it we'll see how we get on fingers crossed we don't burn through anywhere because that would be a little bit embarrassing uh, and we've got the spout here for the spout which is gone rotten as well so it needs redoing stand by for progress okay value viewers that's taken all bloody day and I've already done the top half turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it would be but that's that hopefully salvage um, I did sort of give up halfway because I didn't think I could rescue it. And I went and looked on the internet and I can only find one tank in the entire world for sale. Uh, and that's probably in pretty much as bad shape. So, never mind, I've done my best on that. Uh, so I'm going to prime that up now with a couple of coats of primer. Uh, two top coats throughout the week. Uh, then I'm going to tip it upside down. And then next week it's going to be the reverse. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, three layers of primer on. Also got these straps as well straps that hold the uh, fuel tank to the car, so stripped them down, they were just surface rust on them, going to prime them up too and crack on. Ta-da, and lovely new tank, well that's the top done anyway, four coats on there, one of the straps up there, the other straps on the bottom of the car and a few other miscellaneous items that I need to do. Uh, now we need to flip it upside down and start work on the bottom. Hello, it's uh, another lovely Sunday mid May. So we're cracking on again, we're doing the underside of the tank now. Also doing some rubber seals which I'll show you in a minute. It's a real sod of a job. It's all uh, oil undercoat which I'm very slowly just hacking off with all the freaking tools in the world as you can see. Slowly getting that on the plus side, rarity for England that the way I've known as sol is the sun and it actually makes it enjoyable. Look, ta-da! Oh look what his pants on and Socks. What do you think about that monkey? Very sexy. Monkey thinks it's yellow. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what that matters. Uh, so anyway, we're cracking on with that. I thought we'd have a little tea break or some knackered. So I thought we'd do a little rounds of the garden mug mug. So we've been working hard on Sundays doing this, and then on Saturdays um, we've been I've been finishing GR early, haven't I? Mm -hmm. To do several hours of work. So be careful what I show. But this is the rear garden. And so this used to be just jungle basically, and I'm, it, it is still a little, little bit jungly, but that is a one trillion times better than what it used to be. There's the zoom, there it is. Da da da! And lawn out here, 
So we've been cracking about four hours every Saturday, just hard slogging. And it almost looks presentable, monkey's little flower bed. There with all the nice flowers and ting. Which one's your favourite? I like the roses. The roses, them in the middle, they are quite nice, aren't they? Roger. Very nice. I'm going to show the front as well. Around the side of the house. Those are monkey's fox gloves, she likes them. I have strict orders not to chop them down. Oh, it's nice being hot. This was an absolute, just, uh, I can't describe what this was like, but wherever you see this felt that I put down, all the way down there, that was just, what would you describe it as hell? It was just jungle, basically. Jungle. And so we put felt all the way down, got all the jungle up, which taken a couple of months. So how long have we, what day is it now? A month? Series? Four months this project's been. Um, and then we'll just put these down to weigh it down. Um, just for now, and da, 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 da. as you can see, quite a big pile of stuff has built up. This is just the front pile, I didn't show you the rear pile. All this massive pile. There's little leaves. Hello, leaves. Uh, oak tree, which I'm in the process of cutting down because it's just got, well, trimming should we say anyway. Other little trees that we've liberated. This area was just uh, complete chaos. All we've cleared all this up, liberated the fence, liberated all these flowers and stuff down here, this bed down there, liberated this bed down here. All ivy. Yeah so well let's give you an idea of what what we do every Saturday. These piles of which we've got hundreds of these piles all over the place. Uh, just our ivy and weed and because everything had just overgrown completely because the person who had this house before us sadly died of cancer and um, They hadn't looked after it for about ten years or something. So it had just gone completely wild a newly liberated and trimmed fen uh, hedge around there Liberated all these lovely trees and stuff white one pink one red one stuff down there. So that's four months in uh, we've still got probably a good month of hard labour on it still and then, oh look, I've even liberated that, we didn't even know we had this, this fence and pathway but we've got it and that's been newly liberated which is nice and we've even found our very own bus stop which we didn't know we had uh, that was an interesting find wasn't it so we do have our own bus stop um, and that's it really, so that's four months in I reckon another month, monkey mm -hmm. I reckon another month and um, uh, we'll have all the main work done. Which all the trees chopped down, and that tree chopping down, a fern leaf chopped down, that leaf chopping down, not completely chopping down, but I mean like 10 foot from up the top. There, and then it's going to get to just maintenance. We can actually enjoy the garden, which would be nice, won't it? Yeah, anyway, that's the garden. Ta da! Five hours later, we have a mainly de rusted lower half. I haven't de rusted it completely because it's just too dangerous to cut through too much of the metal. So I've got the surface rust off at least, and I'll put a rust converter on, and hopefully that should do. I'm doing a couple of brackets as well, just to get everything done at the same time. I'll bosh some on, uh, primer on, and report back. Okay, it doesn't look like it, but that is, well, supposedly, according to the bottle, that is primed and rust read. Fingers crossed. So we've got some brackets hanging up on the clothesline there, don't tell Alison. have got a couple of uh, the two straps, fun, finished, and re-rubbered. And in the garage, so we're getting there. Um, stand by for painting. Ta da! That is the bottom finished. We now have a fully uh, restored fuel tank and some other miscellaneous stuff we'll be doing at the same time. Next, we need to look at the filler neck. Okay, next is this fiddly little character. It was the, or is the neck, the filler. It was pretty nasty, but done the best we can. Let's get two coats of primer on that and two coats of finisher. And Philonic finished off, gunmetal grey, that will do me. Right, that's it, we need to start getting things back on the car now, so stand by. Okay, that is the tank fully restored and fully assembled. We're now, we don't have the motor assembly in it, but I'll do that once it's on, I think. We're now going to try and <laughs> lift it all into place with one hand and then fix it with the other hand. So, uh, oh, and I've added all these rubbers back on exactly the same place as they were, you see the little contact rubbers 
So I took a photo of it before I removed them. So let's see how it goes. And ta-da! Ah, um, beautiful new fuel tank. That was a bloody nightmare getting in. It took me all day. Uh, it was obviously a two or three man job, but I managed to get it on my own in the end. So everything completely referred back here, which is great. So, just about that up till the subframe. I haven't done the subframe. That's that. Next things we've got to think about are some rear quarters of the floor pan and thinking about the structural elements of the car. See you back in a couple of weeks.